good to see us all. Hello, it's been a while and I am truly blessed of the Lord this evening. For us, it's half past nine in the evening. We are blessed of the Lord. We are doing well. Um, it's been well with us in the last couple of weeks. I think it's been a few weeks since we got to see each other face to face, even on this platform. Um, and I must say that the Lord has been faithful to us, even as you have all been praying for us and you prayed for us. Um, as we left, as I left, and as I also joined our family back here home in Kenya, it's been well, and we have been able to go through this season. Two, three, two and a half weeks down the line, three, nearly three weeks gone now, and uh, we truly have seen the hand of the Lord over every one of us. It is well here at home in our hearts, and above all in our spirits. You know, it's much more about the spirit because when the spirit is strong and alive the rest of the body, the rest of the soul will also align with the power of the spirit. And so when we have been walking through all this inwardly, what has kept us going is to know that indeed, you know, things come and go, but indeed our focus is on him who has called us and also has a purpose for us even through all these seasons. And so I wanna thank all of you for studying with us. Um, many a time I have wanted just, just I just missed the fellowship and I missed just being on the altar, being in the services, being just with all of us as we normally do. But we must also agree that our God is a God of seasons. I must say that this has little taught me a lot, just here, far away. But still, with you, I have truly enjoyed the fellowship far away. I have truly enjoyed this fellowship. I want to tell you guys, you have no idea what you guys will do over there. You have no idea. I want to tell you, I am here and I can tell you three weeks down the line, I haven't really been into this space as I am this morning, but I want to tell you one thing that I have yearned for is to for you to go and release the altar before the Lord so that I can tune in and listen. And I want to tell you, that's not me alone. There is a number who have been waiting for you guys to just lift their heads before the Lord. And then they also come in, just listen afterwards or whenever. And I have received report all around that guys, what we are doing, it is now that I know. I think I need it's sometimes good to go. Sometimes it's good to go out there and so that you can experience what the Lord is saying. It is now that I know even much more what it means with all what we do over there. So God bless you so much. God, in, God increase you in all what you are doing. You are really blessing our hearts and I am tuning into all the correspondences that I find online. All of them are online. I listen to all of them. And my family also, some of them also listen to them. And truly you have guys, I just feel that the Lord has even released even more grace over all of you. It's been tremendously powerful. And because I'm listening from far away, I can tell and I can just sense the move of the spirit in the midst of the house of the Lord. God bless you so much. I can surely attest to you that I am very well. We are very well, truly very well. God has been good. We just want to keep praying for ourselves and also keep praying for our nation. As we know that, you know, there's been tremendous peace and the Lord, the grace of our Lord is resting over our nation. However, still the enemy does not let you go, does not let you enjoy. And Church of Christ, that is why we have to be up and alert and praying all the time. Because in our nation, we may, and we know that we are celebrating um, the elections that were completed, the peace that was at the time, but now the drought, the, it is just so dry in this place. And I wanna tell you, I can feel it. Everybody can feel it. It's, it's just incredibly, challenging in this place. And so we just must understand that as much as victory is released, there are still those things that we try to pull that victory from us. And so the focus now is actually now on the drought that is ongoing at the moment. And I want to tell you, it has hit hard. It is hitting hard every day. It is hitting every day. And we know when it is hitting, this one can check you and can check me from wherever we are because we are the same people. But you know, we know one thing I've been encouraged about, and I know we do keep sharing with people we meet, is that that God who took us through that election time and sustained peace, that God, you know, he's still on the throne. That God is a God of all seasons. We are encouraged, church of God, that as much as it's as dry as it is, we know that our God is watching. 
We know that our God is at heart. I believe it is time for the church even to raise up now. And you know, we prayed and the Lord gave us peace and gave us everything that we experienced. What about now? I was feeling like it's even now even more that we can believe and trust God to take us through what we are happening and what we are experiencing right here at home. So guys, it is true the place is very dry, but our God even is bigger, is creating this place. However, it is our time to rise up. The enemy does not sleep when sometimes we see victory and we feel we are celebrating. When we are celebrating and we are thanking the Lord, it is the time even to continue in warfare. Warfare is that lifetime um, experience for us. Warfare must never come out of our lips. When we feel like we have got it all, it is the time the devil is, is having it up out there. He is trying from every corner to try and check what we are celebrating. So Church of God, keep doing what you are doing. Keep rising up early in the morning, in the dawn of the morning. Every time you feel um, thread, um, convicted by the spirit of the living God to rise up, rise up and never lie down. It is not time to slumber. It is time to rise up even more and more and more. And you know that our God will do as well. So God bless you so much. It's great to see all of you. It's good to see all of you. It is good for me to be able to participate, even if just for a few minutes. And I know that the Lord is doing us well, even in the midst of all this. And with me, I believe there are a few um, others just around me, and I will see whether they are ready to say hello just for a moment, and we shall continue from there. So I'll just see if Mama, if Nancy is ready to just say hello to the fellowship just for one or two minutes, and then we shall hand over back to you guys so we can continue the program. And so it's just going to be just waiting for one more sister in Christ here, a dear sister in Christ to say hello to the fellowship. Hello, hi guys. <laughs> na shukuru sana kwa hii mkutano. I've been listening to it. Na imenisa idea sana, spiritually. Thank you so much and God, God bless you so much. Amen. 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 Those that may not be aware, that is Aunt Mom. She says she has been listening. She's one of those that have keenly listened and followed up every meeting that we do, every one of them. She is on top. She is waiting for it. And I hear what she tells me, guys. Keep doing what you are doing. Indeed, you are impacting people far away from where you are. You may not recognize this, realize this, but this is real. This is real. Guys, we may think, I don't know how sometimes we think that we are waiting for, for what? It is not out there. It is right within you. It is just with, right within us. What you are doing is exactly what everybody out there is looking for. And so I want to tell you, it is not lesser. It is actually greater. I want to tell you the impact that you and us are doing and making just through that altar will never, will never, will never. There is no one, there is nothing that can take anything away from you guys. So keep worshiping the Lord. Keep interceding. Keep lifting up your hearts before the Lord. I can tell you because I've been far away and I know, I experience, I even sometimes, I want to say I'm well looked after at home, actually I'm spoiled, but I miss one thing. I miss the fellowship of believers. It's real. It's true. It's awesome. May God bless you as you continue to intercede. I'll hand back over to you to continue with the program and you can be sure that what you are doing has touched and is touching generations. Thank you so much for giving us this opportunity. I've got another one more week to come back and I know that the Lord will do us well together even in the, in the, in the, in the course of one week and also when we come back. God bless you and Esther, I'll give it back over to you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good to hear from you, um, our dear servant uh, of God, faith servant of God. Uh, we are happy to see that you are strong and uh, also um, to remind us uh, to stay praying. Um, you know, in this life uh, of, uh, of Christianity or in this journey of faith, there are going to be uh, times in life, um, you know, of every Christian person when it will seem as though the heavens are shut. And the people of Kenya are believers, they are prayerful people. And at the moment, as you have said, people are facing challenges. There is drought, that is uh, mother nature. Um, it will look like our prayers uh, go to the ceiling and bounce back to the floor. You know, it just seems as though God is not listening. 
but my brothers and sisters, I want to remind you, even though God is always listening and attentive to our prayers, there are times when uh, it will not, uh, God will not indicate it. We shall be put on hold. We shall be put to wait, you know, or a delayed response will come. Uh, so there are times, in fact, when he, it will look like uh, God wants us to press a little bit harder, to push a little bit harder and forward in our prayers, in our prayer requests, uh, in whatever we do in our faith, you know, or wait a little bit longer for God's response because God's timing is always right. All I can say is that um, what we are doing, as uh, our sister has said, is to continue praying, to press on hard, to remain strong, even when we feel like God's voice has become silent, uh, for the victory is ours. We have been promised so many things. We have read over and over again in the Bible. And even if we look uh, like even in Psalms 13, uh, we will not go into that. You can read that after. You can see even faithful servants like King David, you know, cried. Jesus on the cross cried, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So there are times when people of God will feel like God has forsaken them. So I would say that uh, whatever we are going through, whatever storms we are going through in our lives, within our friends, within our families, is just to keep on pressing hard, to keep on praying more and more. Um, and that would be my word of encouragement today and also to remember the love of Christ that, um, you know, in, uh, in, in John 3 verse 16, we, we, we know that's a memory verse for God so loved the world. What else do we want? It's just to look up on the son of God and know that God will have his own way to be still and know that God remains on the throne. Um, and over to Anne for a worship song and just for a few minutes, please, Anne. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Uh, I'll just read a verse before I start. Uh, Psalms 25, uh, verse 1 to 3. It says, in you, Lord, I put I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me be put to shame. Nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame. But shame will come to those who are treacherous without cause. Amen. Um, as we sing one or two worship songs, I pray God has blessed us. I feel blessed already so far. And I can't wait to even you know, hear more about the word coming later. Amen. You have done so much for me that I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. You have done so much for me that I cannot tell it all. You have done so much for me. You have done so much for me that I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. You have done so much for me that I cannot tell it all. You have done so much for me you have blessed me so much lord and i cannot tell it all i cannot tell it all i cannot tell it all you have blessed me so much lord and i cannot tell it all you have blessed me so much lord you have loved us so much lord and we cannot tell it all we cannot tell it all oh we cannot tell it all you have loved us so much lord and we cannot tell it all you have loved us so much, Lord. You have blessed us so much, Lord, and we cannot tell it all. We cannot tell it all. We cannot tell it all. 
You have blessed us so much, Lord, and we cannot tell it all. You have blessed us so much. Oh, me fanya majabu na siwezi kueleza, siwezi kueleza. Siwezi kueleza Mmefanya majabu Na siwezi kueleza Mmefanya majabu Oh Lord, you have blessed us so much, Lord And we cannot tell it all Oh, we cannot tell it all we cannot tell it all. You have blessed us so much, Lord, and we cannot tell it all. You have blessed us so much, Lord. There is a place where mercy rests never dies. There is a place to streams of grace, so deep and wide, where all the love I've ever found comes like a flood, comes flowing down. At the cross, at the cross, I surrender my life. I'm in of you, I'm in of you, where your love ran red and my sin washed white. I owe to you, I owe to you. At the cross, at the cross, I surrender my life. I'm in of you, I'm in of you. Where your love ran away and my sin washed white, I owe to you, I owe to you, Jesus. Is a place where sin and shame are powerless, where my heart has peace with God and forgiveness, where all the love I've ever found comes like a flood, comes flowing down. There is a place where sin and shame are powerless, where my heart has peace with God and forgiveness, where all the love I've ever found comes like a flood, comes flowing down. At the cross, at the cross, I surrender my life. I'm in of you, I'm in of you. Where you love and rain and my sin wash white, I owe to you, I owe to you. He, my hope is found here. On holy ground, here I bow down, here I bow down, he arms open wide, he you say my life, here I bow down, here I bow down, he my hope is found, he on holy ground, here I bow down, he here I bow down, he arms open wide, he you say my life, here I bow down, 
Here I bow at the cross, at the cross, I surrender my life. I mean of you, I mean of you, where your love ran red and my sin washed white. I owe to you, I owe to you. Oh, at the cross, at the cross, I surrender my life. I mean of you, I mean of you. Where your love ran right and my sin washed white, I owe to you, I owe to you, I owe to you. I owe to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, who come for you this morning. We give you the praise and adoration. Thank you, Father, for how much you've blessed us, Lord. Father, we can't even uh, tell it all, Jehovah God. We thank you for the gift of life. Thank you, Father, even for bringing us here, Father, and for giving us a platform, Father, where we can come and hear, hear your word and minister minister to Jehovah God. We thank you, Father, as we prepare to listen to your word, Jehovah God, Father, and even start this new week, Jehovah God, Father, we pray that you may be with us and guide us, Father. Thank you, Father, for mom who is back home and everyone back home, Father. All these things that are happening back there, Jehovah God, Father, there's nothing that happens without your knowledge, oh God, and we pray that you may help us, Jehovah God, back there, Father. Even that drought that's, that's happening right there, Jehovah God, Father. We know, Father, you can do it, Father, and you have not forgotten us, Jehovah God, Father. And as you read in your word before, Jehovah God, Father, no one who hopes in you, Father, will ever be put to shame, Father. And we are praying and declaring, Jehovah God, Father, you're going to bring uh, rain, Father, and the drought will be over, Jehovah God, Father. You are a faithful God, Father, and you will never put your believers to shame, Jehovah God, Father. We thank you, Father, even here in Australia, Father. May you bless us, Father, all of us, Jehovah God, Father. Bless all our needs, Jehovah God, Father, and give us strength, Father, and even give us the desire, Father, to keep on wanting to spend time with you and wanting to read your Bible, Father, and even spending time with you and praying, Jehovah God. May you bless us, Father, meet the desires of our heart, Jehovah God, Father, and help us, Father, draw near to you, Jehovah God, Father, so you may draw near to us, Father. We thank you, Lord, Father. We worship you and we honor you, Father. Give us a good day ahead, Father. And we give you all the praise, Father. Prepare our hearts, Father, to listen to your word, oh God. And it's in Jesus' name I pray, believing and trusting. Amen. 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 Um, I think it's time we can go to the word of God. Thank you, Anne, for the beautiful uh, praise and worship. Um, it is uh, by praise and worship, even uh, King David wrote in the Psalms that despite all the difficulties that he will worship, uh, he will worship, he has chosen to worship uh, God with songs and praise. Over to you, and to bless us with the word of God. Uh, good morning, everyone. Praise the Lord. Uh, my name is Anne Wango. I'm blessed today. I have woken up today with a heart full of thanksgiving to God. And I pray that as I share that we will all be blessed and God is gonna plant a seed in our hearts and it's gonna grow in good soil. Uh, today I'm gonna share about um, the power of thanksgiving uh, and, what th and what happens when we give thanks to God. Um, uh, thanksgiving uh, in the Bible means uh, to respond to God's goodness um, and grace with gratitude, it's being thankful. It's, it's, and thanksgiving is like, it's faith in motion. Um, it is a show of expression of your faith to God to attend to your petitions. You know, so, um, I remember back in the days I used to pray, I used to complain a lot, and, and I came to realize there's a secret. If, you know, if I believe for it, I'll, that, I'll give God thanks for it. I'll tell him, oh, thank you, God, uh, for your provision. Thank you, God. It's like believing that he has, it's believing that he has done it for you. So uh, by being thankful in your prayer or after you have prayed only goes to show that you first believe in the ability of God to answer your prayer. And secondly, what you've prayed has been heard and as answered. So it's just waiting for the manifestation. 
Uh, in Hebrews uh, chapter 11, verse 6, uh, the word of God says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So our coming to ask is faith, um, but a greater faith is when we come to him with thanksgiving. So for what we are still believing him to do, because faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So uh, the time for thanksgiving, so the when and the where. So first, we should give thanks whenever we pray. And scripture teaches us by um, illustration. So the different uh, scriptures that I, I came through uh, was Ephesians 1, chapter 16, Philippians 1, uh, from verse 3 to 4, Colossians 1, um, verse 3, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 2, um, and Philippians 4, verse 6, and Colossians 4, uh, verse 2, and I'm just going to paraphrase um, that prayer should be accompanied by um, or should be offered in a context of thanksgiving, because thanksgiving turns our eyes from our problems and ourselves to the Lord, that we might focus on him in his sovereign grace. So it helps us to see through um, the perspective of God, uh, the perspective of God's person, his principles, his promises, his plan, his provisions, and his purposes. So as this happens, the upward focus promotes faith and courage uh, in the face of the trying and painful situations that we sometimes go through, you know, from one decree to another. And secondly, we should always give thanks in everything. Uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19 to 20, uh, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God, the Father for, of everything, in the name of our Lord Jesus. And uh, Thessalonians, First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, um, the word of God says that give God, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. You know. Now, why? Uh, in addition to the reasons that I have given, um, it helps us to focus on the sovereignty of God and the fact that He's in control and working in all things together for good, regardless of how you know they may seem limited to us or from our perspective. So sometimes things are not good, but he uses them for our own good. Um, and so uh, one character in the Bible that I love, that he lived uh, his life uh, through thanksgiving, edifying God, no matter what happened to him, David, David, he had a, um, a thanksgiving lifestyle. And he was always grateful to God for everything he did to him. You know, sometimes he used to go through so much, you know, in the battlefield or even in the wilderness. But uh, the Bible tells us in Psalms, um, Psalms 119, verse 164, that God, that David praised God seven times a day for his righteous judgment. And because of David's thanksgiving lifestyle, uh, God said to him uh, in Psalms 89 verse 23, that I will beat down his foes before his face and plague those who hate him. So whenever thanksgiving rises to God, he stirred into action to perform a miracle in our lives. So let us always, always give thanks to God because it releases enormous power to God to do wonderful in our lives. And so gratitude or thanksgiving, it's a um, spiritual force that empowers us to scale to higher heights. So when we are grateful as Christians, uh, then powerful supernatural forces from heaven are unleashed that cause things to work for us according to God's will. And so what does the power of thanksgiving entail? And I have a few points uh, from the word of God. And point number one is every time we give genuine thanksgiving, fresh oil for fr fresh impact comes on us. And this comes from the book of Psalms 89 from verse 20, 24 to 24. And this is where God had a covenant with David. And from verse 20, of the Psalms 89. So God told him, I have found David my servant, 
with my holy oil, I have anointed him. May God anoint us. May God anoint us every day of our lives as we give him thanks. So with whom my hand shall be established, mine arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not exert upon him, nor the son of the wickedness afflict him. And I will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him. But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. And in my name shall his horn be exalted. And I pray that that is our portion this morning. Um, and in Psalms 50 verse 23, uh, the word of God says that those who sacrifice thanksgiving honor me and to the blameless, I will show my salvation. No. Number two, uh, thanksgiving brings edification to the believers. So if we give thanks to God uh, by testimony, so we build the faith of others. Um, and in Romans chapter 10, verse 7, uh, the word of God says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if we testify through thanksgiving, you know, God will, we will build the faith of others. And they, they believe that what he has done for us, he can do for them too. And I remember when I, I was in Sunday school, when I was growing up, sometimes you used to be told, oh, who has a testimony? Or, you know, who wanna, you know, who wanna share something? And all the time I used to quote from the scriptures of the Psalms that, oh, I give that to, the, to God for he is good and his love and mercy. Uh, and do us forever. And, and, and in, in, in the book of Psalms, there's so many scriptures, different scriptures. So most Sundays or every Sunday, I used to, to put the same verse, different scriptures. And I used to be so amazed, you know, uh, about Thanksgiving. But then I didn't have an insight on what uh, Thanksgiving does to us. But now, through the Holy Spirit, that we get to, to be enlightened and we understand what that Thanksgiving happens. So maybe I should continue testifying now that I'm grown. Anytime in church we are told who has a testimony, I'll be giving thanks to God. Uh, number three, um, thanksgiving brings incredible multiplication. And, uh, you know, it is one thing to have addition, but it, it is another greater thing to have multiplication. And uh, from John chapter 6, verse 5 to 13, this is where... Um, Jesus, uh, he was preaching and then I'm just going to read. Uh, so when Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for the people who, to eat? He asked this only to test him for he already had in mind what he was going to do. So Philip answered him, it would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small loaves and two small fish. But how far will they go among many? Jesus said, have them sit down. So there was plenty, plenty of grass in that place, and they sat down. So about 5,000 men were there. So then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks. The word there, gave thanks and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same um, with the fish. So when they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, gather the disciples that are, gather the pieces that are left over, let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with uh, the piece of loaves that were left over and they, by those who had eaten. And so the five loaves of, bread and two fish were multiplied in the, uh, you know, after Jesus gave thanks to God. And all these 5,000 people, men, uh, were fed and there was left. So there's nothing little in the hands of someone that gives thanks to God. He will always increase if we, if we, if we give thanks, he will multiply, he will. So what, what needs do we have? What little do we have, you know? What do we have to give to the Lord and he will multiply it? What talents do we have? It might be small or little, but he will grow it. He will grow it. Uh, number four, uh, thanksgiving, it turns healing to wholeness. Oh, this, I, loved, I loved this when I was reading. And I don't know, maybe being from working in the health industry or maybe being a nurse, a healing and wholeness is of paramount importance to me because um, our goal is to is, is, is God to help us to, um, to heal, you know, and to bring wholeness to, to our patients. And so um, in Luke chapter 17, 
verse 11 to 19. Uh, this is a story where Jesus um, healed the 10 men with leprosy. And I understand leprosy is sort of like a skin disease. So I'm just gonna read from verse 11. So now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled um, along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, 10 men who had leprosy met him. So they stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. Then he saw them, he said, go show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God with a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus asked, were not all 10 cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you whole. So wholeness is complete health. So as we praise God and thank God, may we experience his wholeness in Jesus' name. So uh, expounding on this, um, so there, there is a distinct difference between being healed and being made whole. Because our wholeness brings peace, completeness, salvation, oneness with God, um, righteousness, eternal security, and love. So uh, Paul says that um, we are complete in Christ, who is the head of all principalities and power. And in John chapter 1, verse 16, uh, from his fullness, we have all received grace for grace. And in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 6 to 7, uh, the word of God says, uh, to the praise of the glory of his grace, where he has made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood. So the forgiveness of sins, according to the richness of his grace. So, um, so between the nine and the one, the, the 10 lepers, so one came to give thanks and nine left. So there's a difference uh, of what happened between the nine and the one. So uh, as I said, like leprosy um, is a skin disease. You know, it affects the whole skin, the, um, the hair, the, the nails, ju just the whole skin. So the nine that were healed, you know, uh, they, have, they, they have new, they got new skin, they got new dermatology. But the one who was made whole by going back to Christ to, to give thanks, he had a new theology. The nine, I believe they had new careers because I'm sure before, you know, they, could do, they couldn't do anything. But the one that came back to Christ, he had a new conviction to follow Christ. Uh, the nine, they had new opportunities in life, but the one on top of the opportunities, he had a new hope. The nine, they had a new outlook. So the one that came back to Christ, he had, on top of having a new uh, uh, outlook, he had a new vision. The nine were restored. The one was made, remade on top of being restored. The nine were released. The one was liberated on top of being uh, released. So, um, and so healing, it brings physical uh, state. You know, sometimes if you have a little wound, you can see the, the, the stages of healing. And if you come back a few days later, you can see the skin that has healed. But being whole, it changes um, the spiritual state, you know, on top of being healed, you're healed, but then being made whole, you know, you are also, your overall, your spiritual state is changed too. Uh, healing changes the outer appearance, but being made whole, it changes your inward conditions. So it has to be both, you have to be both healed and um made whole by Christ. So healing, it cleanses your body, but being made whole, it cleanses the heart and the soul. So we can see the difference between the nine and the one. Uh, healing deals with existing. You know, why do we go to the hospital? We don't wanna, you, we know, we wanna go um, get healed, you know, continue living. But being made whole, it deals with living. Um, healing deals with receiving, you know, receiving, but, being made whole on top of receiving, yeah, it deals with giving, caring, and sharing. So we, we, we get healed and then we get whole so that we can also be able to give 
to care for others and to share, to share the word of God, to share what we have. Um, and my prayer on top of being healed, I want to be healed so that I can look better. And also I want to be whole so that I can act better. So that's the difference. You know, we, we want to be healed so that we can feel better, but we also want to be whole so that we can become better for the kingdom of God. So we want to be healed so that we can have friends. So I can imagine the, the 10 guys in the Bible, the, the, the guys with leprosy, I'm sure they didn't have friends. But being whole, we are being made whole so that we can be friends to the people that don't have friends. So our prayer is to, to be whole so that we can be a friend to someone. So we get healed so that there is no more pain, which is fantastic. But then we can also be made whole so that we can feel the pain of others, so that we can be able to, to, to feel for others, you know. Uh, sometimes we are healed so that we, we may not have no more tears, you know, with, with sicknesses and all this. So we are, you know, there's so much tears. But being made whole, we can be able to share the tear, tears of others. And, and I, I just loved, 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 you know, just always going back, giving thanks to God uh, when he heals us, but also praying for him so that he, praying to him so that he can make us whole. So healing and being being healed and being made whole again goes, you know, together. Uh, another aspect of the power of thanksgiving in the Bible is uh, it brings incredible restoration. And this is from the book of John um, chapter 11, verse 41. So this is when um, Lazarus, Jesus' friend, died. And so he was called and he went there. So from verse 41, the word of God says, so they took away the stone and then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you for you have heard me. So he knew what God is going to do. He already knew he had faith, he trusted him and he knew that his friend is going to come back to life. And then verse 42, he said, I, I knew that I know that you always hear me, but I say this for the benefit of people standing here, that they may believe that you have sent me. And when he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out. His hands and feet were wrapped with stripes of linen and a cloth around his face. So Jesus gave thanks and Lazarus rose from the dead. What dead situations do we have in our life? Instead of crying, let's give thanks. To God. The, the, let's give thanks. And every opportunity that is dead in our life, it will be restored in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, point number five, uh, thanksgiving brings total deliverance from all our troubles. And in Psalms chapter 50, um, verse 14 to 15, the word of God says that offer unto God thanksgiving and pay your vows unto the highest and call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. So when we are in trouble, let's just give thanks to God. Let when we call upon him, he will come and deliver us and we shall glorify him. Uh, point number six, uh, thanksgiving provokes the blessings of God upon our lives. Um, this um, from Second Chronicles chapter one, verse six to 15. Uh, so Solomon went up to the bronze altar before the Lord in the tent of meeting and offered a thousand pound offerings on it. So that night, God appeared to Solomon and said to him, ask for whatever you want me to give you. See, he provoked God to bring blessings upon his life. And Solomon answered God, you know, you have shown great kindness to David, my father, and have made me king in his, in, in his place. Now, Lord God, let your promise to my father David be confirmed, for you have made me king over a people who are numerous as the dust of the earth. Give me wisdom and knowledge that I may lead these people, for who is able to govern these people of yours? So God said to Solomon, since this is your heart's desire and you have not asked for wealth, possessions or honor, nor the death of your enemies. And since you have not asked for a long life, but for wisdom and knowledge to govern my people whom I have made you king, therefore wisdom and knowledge will be given to you. And I will also give you wealth, possessions and honor, such as no king who was before you ever had and none after you 
will have. So Solomon got divine overflow. You know, more than he had asked for, he got divine overwhelming prosperity. Like silver to him became like stones, you know. And let us always, always give thanks to God. Let us, you know, he is faithful. He is faithful. Uh, another point is uh, Thanksgiving brings down the glory of God. Um, so in Second Chronicles chapter 5, verse 1 to 3, and verse 13 to 14 of the same chapter. So this is when the ark uh, was brought to the temple. So verse 1, uh, when all the work Solomon had done for the temple of the Lord was finished, he brought in the things his father David had dedicated, the silver and gold and all the furnishings, and he placed them in the treasuries of God's temple. Then Solomon, verse 2, then Solomon summoned to Jerusalem the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes and the chiefs of the Israelite families to bring up the ark of the Lord's covenant from Zion, the city of David. And all the Israels came together to the king at the time of the festival in the seventh of the month. So then we skip to verse um, 13 to 14 of the same chapter. So the trumpeters and musicians joined in unison to give praise and thanks to the Lord and give thanks to the Lord. So accompanied by trumpets, cymbals, and other instruments, the singers raised their voices in praise to the Lord and sang, he is good, his love endures forever. Then the temple of the Lord was filled with the cloud. And the priests could not even perform their service because of the cloud, for the glory of God had filled the temple of the Lord. You know, I was so amazed. I was so blessed by this word, you know, giving thanks to God, giving thanks to God. You know, it brings down his glory. It brings down his glory. And you know, when the glory of God comes, there is transformation, there is healing, whatever we've been crying and praying for, you know, he comes through for us. So I pray that uh, from today, we give thanks to God at all times. You know, we do in whatever circumstances that we are going through, can we all be giving thanks to God? So um, that's the word of God today. And I'm just gonna do a quick prayer and I'll uh, pass over to Auntie Esther. So God, we come before you this morning with thanksgiving in our heart, Lord. All the glory and honor belong to you, Lord. We thank you for you are holy. We thank you for who you are in our life. Thank you for your word, my Father, that from today, God, we will always be thankful to you. Our hearts will always be full of thanksgiving, King of glory. We thank you and we worship your holy name. In Jesus' name, I pray and believe. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much, Anne, for that um, wonderful teaching of thanksgiving. Uh, the word of God has cut through like a double-edged sword, oh God, in our hearts. May it uh, teach us uh, to give thanks to God in every situation, in every circumstance. And even in Psalm 75, it tells us, we give thanks to you, oh God. We give thanks for your name is near. Men tell of your wonderful deeds. And in verse 9 of the same Psalm 75, as for me, I will declare this forever. I will sing praise to the God of Jacob. I will give thanks forever. Let every one of us declare to give thanks to God in every situation. Um, I don't know whether we have got any announcements in the house before we say the last prayer. Nothing to announce so far. No other announcements? Um, no other announcement. All right. All right. So um, we will say um, a final prayer, a closing prayer for the day. And uh, God will bless each one of us. Oh, God, we thank you for the word. We thank you, my father, because your word has taught us, oh, God, to give thanks to you in every situation, oh, God. 
We pray, oh my Father, that your word will grow in us. You will nurture your word in our lives, oh God, that we shall always remember to give thanks in every situation, in every circumstance. May we not forget, my Father, that, oh God, we shall not depend on our own feelings, oh God, or in our own circumstances, oh my Father, but we shall remember to go back into your word, King of glory, and say, oh God, that you are our God that does for us in every situation, Jehovah God, that you are near to us in times of difficulty and and in times of happiness, oh God, we shall remember to glorify your name in every situation. And it is in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I do pray and uh, give thanks. Um, I we can say the grace, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of Amen. God Amen. and the, the Holy Spirit be with Amen. us now and forever oh, uh, i wish you a blessed day my brothers and sisters may the love of god walk with you um may the spirit of god lead the way for you at your places of work in everything that you touch to do today i speak blessings over you all today and in all your ways on in and in all areas of your lives today the words that we shall speak let us uh, speak the words of God. May God put his word in our tongues so that uh, we can uh, love and be able to bless others. Uh, mm -hmm. I wish you a happy day. And that is the end of today's prayer session. Thank you. Thank you.